let's talk about something colder than your ex's heart. Absolute zero. That's minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. For the true thermodynamic purists out there, zero Kelvin. Yes, zero. Not a little cold, not bring a sweater, but the end game of temperature, the finish line, the big freeze. Now, what is absolute zero really? Well, it's the point at which all thermal motion, that is, the jittery dance of atoms and molecules, stops completely. Picture this, atoms are always vibrating, even in solids. It's like they're having a microscopic rave party 24 hours a day. But at absolute zero, that party is over. The DJ leaves. The lights go out. And every particle just stops. No more movement. No more life. No more fun. Sounds cool, right? Too bad it's a scientific unicorn. In the real world, and even in our most advanced laboratories, absolute zero is impossible to reach. Trust me. We've tried. We've built machines colder than outer space, colder than interstellar voids, colder than your internet connection during a Zoom call. But every time we get close, the laws of physics slam the door in our face. You see, as you cool things down, atoms give off energy. But the closer you get to zero Kelvin, the harder it becomes for them to lose that last tiny bit of energy. It's like trying to get a toddler to give up the last bite of cake. Not gonna happen. Even the best cryogenic systems on Earth have only achieved temperatures just a few billionths of a degree above absolute zero. And yes, I said billionths, that's a one, followed by nine zeros. We're close, but close doesn't count when you're chasing the coldest number in the universe. So, what happens at absolute zero? In theory, everything stops. In practice, nothing quite gets there. It's like the speed of light in reverse, a perfect limit we can only approach, never touch. Kind of poetic, if you think about it. The universe always keeps just a sliver of motion, a whisper of heat, no matter how hard we try to shut it down. And that, my curious friends, is absolute zero. Colder than death, colder than space, colder than your roommate's leftovers from last month, but also just out of reach forever. So, what would happen to a human body at minus 273.15 degrees Celsius? Ah, the question on everyone's frosty little mind. Let's say you, in all your warm-blooded glory, are suddenly plunged into a place where temperature itself takes a permanent vacation absolute zero. What happens? Well, for starters, your body wouldn't have time to scream. The water inside your cells, and you're mostly water, by the way, a fancy meat balloon with a college degree would freeze instantly. Not just turn into ice, but shatter your cells from the inside out. It wouldn't be a slow, graceful slide into cryosleep. No, it would be more like a molecular explosion. Picture every little droplet of water expanding into sharp crystals rupturing cell walls like popcorn kernels bursting in a microwave only way colder and way less delicious. Your skin, brittle. Your muscles, solid blocks. Your eyes, frozen marbles. Honestly, you'd make a very detailed but extremely fragile statue. You could probably be displayed in a museum assuming you survived the freezing process, which you wouldn't. One bump and crack, there goes your left arm. Whoops, there goes your head. Try gluing that back together. Now, some people might say, but wait, what about cryonics? Isn't that basically freezing people to save them for the future? Ah, yes. Cryonics, the optimistic dream of turning the freezer aisle into a time machine. Unfortunately, real cryopreservation doesn't get anywhere near absolute zero. They use liquid nitrogen, which is a measly minus 196 degrees Celsius. Still cold enough to ruin your day, but not nearly as dramatic. And even then, the science is, shall we say, not quite there. Freezing a body without it turning into cellular rubble is a bit tricky. You see, ice crystals are like tiny wrecking balls. They destroy everything. 
That's why modern cryonics relies on special chemicals called cryoprotectants, which try to stop ice from forming at all. It's like trying to trick nature into playing nice. Spoiler, nature hates being tricked. So let's be clear if your body were exposed to absolute zero, you wouldn't just freeze. You would be annihilated at the molecular level. Instant destruction, total shutdown, game over, no respawn. It's not preservation, it's obliteration in the most elegant, silent, icy way imaginable. But hey, at least you'd go down in style, frozen in time, literally. Now let's ask the obvious question. Why can't we just toss a body into a freezer set to absolute zero and see what happens? You know, for science. Well, my friends, welcome to the edge of physics where reality gets slippery and atoms start doing things that would make even science fiction writers raise an eyebrow. First of all, no, we cannot just reach minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Absolute zero is like that mythical land your GPS keeps rerouting you toward but never quite finds. We've built the coldest machines on Earth, using laser cooling, evaporative techniques, magnetic traps, you name it. And we've reached within billionths of a degree from absolute zero. Billionths. That's colder than deep space. Colder than Pluto's bad attitude. Colder than your inbox after sending a risky text but still not absolute zero. Why? Because to reach it, you'd have to remove every last bit of energy from a system, and the universe really hates that idea. The closer we get, the more stubborn atoms become. They cling to their last shred of motion like it's a Black Friday deal. No matter how sophisticated your lab coat is, you're not stopping them completely. Now, what does happen to matter when it's nearly that cold? Ah. This is where things get strange, and I mean quantum strange. At near zero temperatures, metals can become superconductors. They carry electricity with zero resistance. Imagine running your toaster forever without it heating up. Or water turning into a superfluid, it climbs walls, flows without friction, and generally behaves like it's possessed by a ghost with a physics degree. Cool, right? But now imagine throwing a human body into that environment. It wouldn't magically become a superconducting zombie. Oh no. It would disintegrate long before you ever reached those exotic phases of matter. Biological tissue isn't designed for quantum weirdness. It's designed for 37 degrees Celsius and an occasional fever. You try lowering it by 100 degrees and things fall apart literally. Long before you ever got close to absolute zero, your body would be ruined by basic freezing damage. Cells would burst, tissues would fracture, organs would shatter like fine china in a washing machine. Even with the best technology in the world, cooling a body to near zero temperatures intact, that's like trying to knit a sweater during an avalanche, admirable, but doomed. So no, you can't just arrive at absolute zero. You approach it, carefully, with the grace of a quantum ballerina. And human bodies? They don't dance well in this particular show. Ah, cryonics, the noble, slightly desperate hope that someday, science will defrost us like a microwave dinner and bring us back to life. Because nothing says immortality like being stored in a giant metal thermos at minus 196 degrees Celsius, waiting for the future to figure things out. It's the human equivalent of saying, I'll just nap until the singularity arrives. So, how does this work? Well, when someone legally dies, which is a polite way of saying very dead, their body is cooled as quickly as possible. Then, instead of letting ice crystals tear them apart like microscopic ninjas, specialists pump in something called cryoprotectants. These are basically antifreeze for humans. Romantic, isn't it? The goal? to prevent ice formation. Because, fun fact, regular freezing is terrible for living tissue. Water expands into jagged crystals, punches through cell membranes, and leaves behind a molecular mess. Imagine trying to preserve a beautiful sculpture by smashing it with a hammer and hoping the pieces remember where they came from. That's basic freezing. 
Cryonix tries to avoid this by turning the body into a glass-like state, a process called vitrification. Sounds fancy. Still doesn't fix the whole you're dead part. But details, details. Now, here's where things get frosty pun fully intended. Some people assume Cryonix aims to reach absolute zero. Oh no, that would be the equivalent of preserving someone by vaporizing them. Absolute zero is not a preservation method. It's a molecular death sentence. At zero Kelvin, not only does life stop, everything stops. The chemistry of life, the delicate balance of atoms and proteins, the dance of electrons frozen beyond repair. There's no coming back from that. It's not sleep. It's a hard reset with no restart button. Cryonics, for all its sci-fi dreams, doesn't flirt with temperatures that extreme. Instead, it settles for being really, really cold, but not universe-ending cold. Think of it like the deep freezer in your basement, but with more paperwork and a lot more liability. So can a body be preserved? Technically, yes, in the way you preserve a snapshot of a hard drive before the computer explodes. The real question is, can it be restored? And that, my curious snowflakes, is a problem for future science or future archaeologists. So now we arrive at the final question, the coldest one of all. What does it mean to live without heat? You see, we often think of life as a list of accomplishments, milestones, or social media posts. But in physics, life is really just motion, vibrations, energy, heat. From the rapid spin of molecules in your coffee to the electric pulses in your brain, life is warmth in motion. Remove the heat and everything stops. At absolute zero, there's no time, no sensation, no thought, just silence. You could call it perfect stillness or perfect death. Or, if you're feeling poetic, the quietest note the universe can play. No heartbeat, no brainwave, not even a twitch of a protein molecule. Just a frozen system in perfect stasis, forever unchanged. Sounds peaceful? Maybe. But it's also utterly lifeless. And here's the punchline. Life needs chaos. It needs heat, imbalance, friction, even a little disorder. That's what keeps the heart beating and the stars burning. Absolute zero, for all its elegance, is not the beginning of anything. It's the end of everything. So next time you're feeling a bit too warm, sweating through your lab coat or complaining about summer, remember, heat is life. The universe gave you this beautiful, chaotic vibration. Don't wish it away. Because without it, you're not frozen in time. You're just gone. And that, my frosty friends, is the strange, tragic beauty of absolute zero. It's not just cold, it's the coldest truth of all.